What I'm about to tell you is a true story that went unconfirmed for decades. And I'm going to put you in that scenario to see what you would have done in that situation. Imagine you're a pilot during the Vietnam War. You fly the KC-135, that big silver jet there. That's an air refueler or tanker. Fortunately for you, you're an experienced pilot, and you've led many missions. Typically, a mission consists of four, other tank four tankers and 16 fighter jets. You would fly to an area known as the Anchor, which is near but never in enemy territory. The fighters would come from their home base, and they would, refuel on the way, they would fill up with fuel on the way to their targets. After they would come off their targets, they would refuel again on the way back home. These missions require a lot of planning and precision. You are holding in your anchor area when you get the call. The call is from one of your fighters that you're waiting for. He is badly damaged and leaking fuel. He is pleading for you to come get him. Now, the boom operator that controls the refueling boom can actually perform what's called manual boom latching. This will lock the refueling boom onto the jet, which allows for some towing capability. The fighter does not think he can make it back to the anchor point. The other option for him is to bail out over North Vietnam, a horrible prospect at the time. The other fighters tell you that the surface-to-air missiles and machine gun ground fire are suppressed for now. Regulations strictly prohibit you from crossing the border into North Vietnam. With 25,000 gallons of fuel on board, you're an inviting target. One missile hit, and you become a fireball of propaganda for North Vietnam. Now, if you choose to go get him, there will be repercussions if you make it out alive. And if you choose not to, you are following the regulations, though you're leaving a fellow American behind. So, what do you do? Who's going to get him? Who's not going to get him? Those of you who are undecided, we're just Switzerland. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, perhaps you have some additional questions, such as, can I ask for permission to go get him? I can tell you what, the, what they're going to tell you from headquarters. No. How long is the ground fire suppressed for? Unsure. Can the other fighters go with me? No. Are we going to get them? Are we not? OK. As I mentioned, this is a true story. I learned about it from my father, who was a tanker pilot in Vietnam. But he's not the one in the story. He only heard about it after it happened. But it was never confirmed, never published. It was just legend among the tanker and fighter pilot communities until 2021. My father wrote for an aviation magazine, and through some mutual connections, he was actually introduced to the pilot and were able to interview him. So what did the tanker pilot and his air crew do? It took him about 10 seconds to decide. Let's go get him, said the boom operator. Now, interestingly enough, the boom operator is enlisted and the lowest ranking member of the air crew. The pilot, co-pilot, and navigator are all officers who outrank him. But they were all in agreement with the boom operator. The fighter pilot gives his location, the tanker navigator plots the course, and they hook up about 30 miles from Hanoi, the heavily defended capital of North Vietnam. Now, due to fuel consumption, the jet is leaking fuel nearly as fast as it's consuming it. So the tanker actually has to land at the fighter base. Once the tanker lands, the tanker pilot and his air crew get out of the jet, and the fighter commander of the base comes up and thanks them. You save my fighter pilot's life, he gives them a huge hug. That fighter pilot is a brand new father. That fighter commander says, I'm going to put you in for the Distinguished Flying Cross, which is a tremendous honor and award. A couple of days later, the tanker returns to their home base. The tanker commander wants to see the pilot, Upon the tanker commander, upon entering his office, immediately realizes there's a problem. You broke regulations and risked your life, the lives of your air crew, and your airplane. He's holding the paperwork for the Distinguished Flying Cross. He rips it up and throws it in the garbage. There's your medal, he adds. Tanker pilot asks, sir, if it was you, would you have left the kid out there? Commander's response, get the hell out of here. The tanker commander tells his crew they may be going home early. But a couple of days later, they're flying missions again. So here's how decisions are made. 
or more often not made. First, we're made aware of a situation. Awareness. Is this a moment that counts for someone I want to be? We're aware a decision has to be made, and we begin to wrestle with it. Then comes reasoning. Reasoning. What should I be considering? My life? My air crew's life? The fighter pilot's life? The risks? All of the things that go into deciding whatever it is I'm going to do. Then comes the decision. Decision. How would the person I want to be do what I'm about to do? I have to make a decision one way or another. I must decide. And finally, there's action. Action. Are my actions consistent with who I say I want to be? Here's the problem. When faced with a genuinely challenging decision, we do not act. There is a decision-action gap. So, how many of you have been lying in bed awake at 3 in the morning thinking about something that happened in the past? Oh, man, I should have said this. It's too late, bro. It's high school. She's gone. She's not coming back. Okay. What we're talking about here is a right versus right decision. I can either go get the pilot or not. Either decision can be reasoned and justified, but they are mutually exclusive. You cannot do both. You're either going or you're not. Now, right versus wrong is easy. You guys know right versus wrong. If you see me kicking a baby down the street, you know that that's wrong. Some of you are thinking, well, what did the baby do to deserve it? The baby didn't deserve it. What we're talking about here is right versus right. When there's no easy decision, you have to make the tough decision because the action reflects on you. In reference to Abraham Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation, historian Doris Kearns Goodwin said that Lincoln chose to assume full responsibility for a pivotal decision. Once you make the decision, commit to it. Lieutenant Colonel Galen Sargent was the pilot who went against regulation to save a fellow American life. When asked why he never told the story, he said, I didn't want it to sound like bragging. That's remarkable humility. When asked how he felt about the situation, he said, I sleep well at night. And there is the point in your decision-making process. Can you sleep at night with the decisions you make? Because if you chose not to go get the pilot, that's perfectly OK, too, so long as you can live with that decision. Now, none of this is to say Lieutenant Colonel Sargent and his crew didn't have concerns when they crossed the border into North Vietnam. I can't repeat his exact words for a TED Talk, but let's just say it was rather tense. It was very quiet amongst the air crew. All felt the pressure of saving that life, and that's exactly what they did. So who was this heroic tanker pilot? We lost him in 2021, but he came from humble beginnings. He grew up on a farm in the panhandle of Oklahoma. In college, he majored in animal husbandry and enrolled in ROTC. He retired as the commander of Strategic Air Command's Combat Evaluations Group. He never made the rank of colonel, which he always suspected was because of this decision. However, he never once regretted it. So let's look at how we can make this decision and go through the process. It's important to remember, analyzing does not equal resolution. Just because you're thinking about your dilemma does not mean any action is taking place. So, we can consider ends-based thinking. Do whatever produces the greatest good for the greatest number. Here we could reason not going to get the pilot is good because there's four of us in the air crew and one fighter pilot, four to one. However, we could consider the ground troops that rely on that pilot to provide air cover and consider them to be worth more. So you can continue to decide whichever one you think does the greatest good for the greatest number. Then we can look at rule-based thinking. Now, contrary to how this one sounds, it's not simply about following the established set of rule or rules. It's about following the principle you want others to follow. In our story, this is extremely difficult. Do I want other tanker pilots to go against regulation if they can save a life? Do I want them to follow regulations and leave somebody behind? The answer to those questions is yes. Or <laughs> it might be no. Do we see why action does not happen? Do we see why the decisions are so hard? 
Finally, we can consider care-based thinking. Do to others what you want done to you. If I'm in that damaged fighter jet, you better believe I want you to come get me. How many of you put yourself in the fighter pilot's position? Here you can apply the golden rule. Is that the only one that matters? When faced with challenging decisions, the resolution requires choosing the nearest right, and that requires principles for decision making. Most of you have an idea of what your own morals or values are. At least you have some idea, but have you ever taken the time to define them? Have you ever written them down? Why in the world would I need to do that? Well, someday, for everybody in this room, you're going to be faced with a challenging decision. Hopefully it's not life or death, but it may be critically important to you, or someone you care about, or even a total stranger. If you know who you are, you are far better prepared to handle that challenging situation when it presents itself. So, consider who you say you want to be when facing these challenging situations. Know who you are and act. Do not remain idle. Act according to the person that you want to be. And finally, something I've never had the privilege to say before, thanks for coming to my TED Talk.